Hey guys, this is HK Boba, and welcome to part 2 of my Double Touch tutorial series. In part 2, we're going to be focusing on the ground to double touch. So, I know the first tutorial I said I covered both ground to double touch and the wall to double touch in part 2, but I realized that kind of made zero sense as far as organizing goes. So if you're here for the wall to double touch tutorial, I apologize, but you're just gonna have to sub and hit that bell to stay tuned for part three instead. But if you're here for the actual ground double touch tutorial, please smash that subscribe and destroy the like button anyways. Let's get right into it. The ground to double touch is probably gonna be one of the most common ways you're gonna land a double touch in a match. So let's break it down into first the setup and the double touch itself. For this video, we'll be using whey protein's ground to double taps training pack. To get things started, you simply want to boost into the ball and now punt it towards the backboard. At this point, depending on the height of the bounce, we usually want to use a fast aerial to fly towards the ball. Once you're comfortable with following the ball after a setup, here's a couple tips to improve on them to get more consistent during a match. Just like how we want a space between us and the backboard for aerial double touches, our first tip is going to be we want to have an appropriate amount of space between us and the backboard on a ground to double touch as well. So to create that space, one thing that you could do is simply boost into the ball and right as you make that touch, you could tap your brake real quick before you jump and that'll help create a certain amount of space between you and that ball. Another thing that I personally like to do is I boost into the ball, but the moment I'm about to make that touch, I let go of boost and only hit it with holding down my accelerate. These are two quick ways that you can easily create a little bit of distance between you and that backboard for your setup. Depending on how fast you're going when you hit the ball or how far you are from the backboard, you might not need to do this. For example here, I'm starting at a pretty low speed and we're pretty far back, so I'm going to boost into the ball and I'm not going to let go or even press brake before I jump. I'm simply going to jump after that ball right after I make the touch. Tip number two is to try to set up a ball that have the resulting bounce be goal side, as shown by the dotted lines at DFH Stadium. If the setup gets past the far post, or even close to the far post, it'll be almost impossible to score it. And if the setup is too close to the side that you're setting up on, towards the near post, it's definitely still scorable, but it can be difficult. Leading us to the third tip. The further you are from the goal, the more distance you'll need from the backboard. This will give the ball travel time to make it into the net, or else you'll just slam the ball back into the backboard. The final tip I have for you is regarding bouncing setups. You're not always going to get a perfectly rolling ball coming at you in a match. So with a bouncing ball, I generally like to jump right as the bounce occurs and then double jump on contact to cancel out the recoil. Depending on the bounce, if you jump too late, you're going to end up hitting the bottom of the ball, setting it way too high up. Whereas if you jump too early, you might not be setting the ball high enough for a double touch to really be possible. So practice your timing with getting a solid touch on the bouncing setups. All right, let's move on to hitting the actual double touch itself. A lot of the same tips from the previous video apply here. We wanna make sure we hit the double touch with a hard part of our car, either with the nose, or like we talked about in the previous video, we wanna hit with our back so that we can prevent pancaking, which is when you hit it with your wheels and you kinda of just bop off the ball. But unlike with aerial double touches, sometimes you don't have the time or space to turn around. So if you can't, then at least try to get that double touch with your nose. One big tip for me that I want to mention from the previous video that helps me a lot is to boost down onto the ball. If you have time to get above it, turn around and then boost down onto it, it can really help with avoiding either undershooting or overshooting the double touch. Boosting down onto the ball can also help prevent undershooting the ball, where you might hit the bottom of it during the double touch, lifting the ball back up into the backboard. But this is impossible if you're boosting down onto it. And the last tip I have for you is try keeping your eye on the bounce location. Especially if you're having trouble hitting these in game, but you can hit them in training, it might just be because you're getting really distracted by your teammates or the defenders. Instead of focusing on each individual thing separately and then going back to the ball, try focusing on the ball and the bounce and receiving that information using your peripherals. With those tips in mind, you should be good on practicing double touches. Once you're comfortable with the basics, we can work on some harder setups. 
The ball isn't always going to roll perfectly to where you're facing and you're not always going to be facing perfectly at the backboard either. So this training pack is one where I made where you're slightly off center from the ball so that you'll have to boost and drift to get into position, line yourself up to where you want to be and then send the ball to the backboard before starting your setup. This might help you with practicing more weird and realistic angles that you might be dealt in a real match. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. For those of you who are waiting for the wall to double touch tutorial, please consider subscribing and being on the lookout for that. I'll definitely try to get to it soon. Thanks again, and I will catch you next time.